Good afternoon, everybody. This is again Roman from Levittown, New York. How are you doing today? So welcome back, and I hope you've been getting uh, value for the time you're spending with me so far. But today I'm going to share with you the idea that caught my attention about two years ago that I finally was able to understand. And uh, now I see that really this idea can be helpful to many, many people around the world. So I decided to share it with you today in in some detail and uh, explain what I found, why I think it worth looking at. Obviously, there is nothing perfect for everybody, but I think this is something that worth at least again look at, try to give, give it some thought, uh, do some little research, and then decide. Don't just say, because this is that, I don't want to deal with it. Take your time and try to figure it out or try to find pros and cons and see which ones you find uh, more advantageous. So, I'm going to look at two systems of business. One is a regular business that pretty much everybody knows, heard of, or works for, and one that I found uh, advantageous for many people. I'll I keep a little secret with the name because I don't want to just uh, jump off the board just because I'm going to mention it. Actually, you know what? I really don't want to waste your time. So I'm going to compare a regular business with network marketing business and how those two are suited in a today's life. So we'll start with regular business. And we'll make a little line here. So when you start regular business, you will have to figure out number one, your business idea. You have to come up with something, what your business is going to be doing or selling. So we'll start business idea. Once you come up with business idea, unless you're buying a franchise from a big company that is already designed everything, you have to really put it on the paper. So you have to create the business plan. Then, if you're again not working already in that area of uh, industry that you're going to use or you're going to get involved in, you have to learn. So you have to spend some time and money on education. So we'll just put education here. With my example, I wanted to be an attorney and uh, I had to go to law school. So for people who were born in America or who went to school in America, after going to high school, they also had to go to college and then to law school. So combined, we're looking at about seven years of, of formal education and a lot of money before you can get that law degree. I was lucky I had my degree from Ukraine, which was fully evaluated here in America. So I only had to do uh, three and a half years. I did night school, so I expedited the process a little bit. Now, once you get education, <clears throat> you need to get a... a office office or store or a location there are very few or the very few traditional businesses that you can run from home again right now more and more businesses are becoming online or virtual but before uh, recent events most businesses had to have one of these things if you're selling something you have to have a storage if you offer in services, you have to have place to meet with your clients, uh, and so any any kind of location. Okay, number five. In most cases, you need some staff. You need people who will be working with you together and helping you to run your business. If uh, you're an attorney, you need a secretary, you need paralegal. If you're a doctor, you need nurses or physical assi medical assistants or a physician assistant so somebody to help you out if you're in the store you cannot run the store 24 7 on your own you have to hire somebody else it's family business and then all the family has to work and once you decide to go on vacation you have to close the store or leave somebody behind so anyways you need some stuff six Then you actually need to uh, get your products or services you're going to be selling. And again, if it's services, maybe it's not so much an investment. You just meet with clients and provide them with services. 
but the products you have to buy them from a manufacturer or from a distributor or some kind of middleman between this uh, manufacturer and you and then bring it to your customers so again you have an investment here then as your business progresses you have to have an accountant to make sure that you account for the products you buy and the revenues you get all correctly then you file taxes properly and make sure that you don't get in any trouble with IRS we all know in America it's a really bad idea to get in trouble with these guys so you obviously have to do that and you have option to do it yourself then you have to learn it unless you already know it or another option that many people take you hire somebody to help you with that because obviously the more professional people you hire the better results are and you save them time to put into your business so that's always consideration then one way or the other your business will need some kind of legal support it's uh, rents it's uh, agreements with the suppliers it's uh, employment agreements if you have employees um, any disputes with uh, other companies with IRS all those things you have to address with the legal support so again you will have to get somebody to help you on that front then uh, each business will have to be paying taxes on all different levels federal state uh, employment taxes again if you have employees so this is something that you will have to deal with now if we go through this list except for idea probably and business plan everything else will require some kind of investment from you before you can even start your business and except for taxes taxes will be paid later but everything else you have to put up front before you do it the exception to this rule probably will be like i mentioned already if you buy in franchise all of this will be done or most of this will be done but you have to pay for franchise before you get any money so this is the traditional business and this is what many people who are trying to become a business person and go away from em employee position are faced with now uh just for comparison let me show how we do it in, in network marketing So in network marketing, we have a company that takes care of all of this. So we're just going to put one company. And I'm not talking about any specific company right now. It's just a company that decided to use or do this do business differently. How is this company is different from others? These companies do not do any uh, advertising. We are uh multimedia tvs news billboards uh um that kind of thing that we all used to uh, something that pops up in your email once in a while this company has decided to go a different way which way are they going the way that we all been living we asking when we're looking for a good product we're not going to the newspaper and start looking for the product on the newspaper the first thing everybody does call their family and friends say i'm looking for this professional or this product what did you get who do you use where do you go have you seen good movies wouldn't you share with your friends saying oh i just watched a great great movie go get it go watch it now how many of you for all those recommendations that we've been doing from the get-go when we were kids are you saying oh i got this ice cream it's good ice cream oh, i went this bicycle it's good bicycle my parents got it for me all our life we recommend people something every single day somebody asks us an opinion and we share our experiences but how many of us get paid for that don't you think that you bring the value to the world and giving some good quality recommendation i'm not talking about bad and dishonest recommendation obviously this is beside the point eliminated from what i'm talking about because the last thing I want to do is give a bad recommendation to a human being. I heard today a very good saying, saying the most expensive information we get is a bad information. So obviously I don't want to give anybody bad information. But really, if we are honest people and we're giving our friends and family good recommendations, 
that would be for something that we had experience with before and that experience was good experience or the experience with that will say do not use that because that experience was not pleasant not good you didn't get the value that you were seeking for so what this company is the network marketing business decided why doing uh, a lot of expensive campaigns advertising our products by people who never tried our product or for people who advertise it but never actually use our product instead of giving the people who actually tried the product like the product an opportunity to share with others their feelings their impressions their experiences and if these people bring a business to the company share with them the profits so a regular business goes like this 50 percent 50 percent what it means this is a pro and this is just approximate so it doesn't necessarily all businesses but more or less production and marketing 50% on the cost of the product usually is the production cost. Uh, materials, suppliers, uh, facilities, staff, administrative expenses, all this stuff. All of this. And the second 50% is marketing. By the way, I actually omitted this here. So that will be number 10 that you will still have to take care about and in traditional sense you will have to pay for it. Now, in network marketing, we have the same distribution. More or less, each company has different uh, percentages, but it's around that number, 50-50, 51, 49, whatever. And 50% still go to the production cost. And all these processes are taken care of by this 50%. But the other 50%, the company shares among the people who A, tried the product, B, loved the product, C, get the benefit of the product and, and results, depending on what kind of industry it is. And D, like to share this. So it's honest sharing. It's not just because I'm getting paid, I'm going to tell you about the product. It's just because I like the product. I'm still using the product. And I know that if you take it, you probably will like it as well. Otherwise, I would not be telling you this. So let's look at this network marketing business. The company takes care of business idea business plan, education, location, staff, product, products, accounting, lawyers, and taxes. The only thing that we have to take care of is marketing. So we have a company and then we have us, distributors. What does the distributor do? He or she comes to the company, probably by recommendation of somebody else, and takes tries the product. Some companies offer products to test for free, some companies you have to buy it, but hey, you get in something that you're going to use, so why get in for free? There is nothing really free in the world. We always have to pay for it, one way or the other we are paying. So the company says, here is my choice, you have to buy this, you can take it, try it, and decide for yourself or like it. Different companies approach it different ways. Some companies say this is a specific set you have to buy. Some companies say buy whatever you like and, mm. and try it. That's again, company's choice. And all of us who are in this category of distributors, we have a choice or a way to, to decide which company you want to join. We'll speak to more about my company and why I am in this specific company. But for now, that's general idea. So what distributors do, they, uh, like I'll, I'll say love products because if you don't love it why would you go and and share with everybody else you really have to love it you have to enjoy it you have to use it there are many businesses where you have a boss of the dealership uh sorry guys for the car, car business i'm going to pick on you now boss of the dealership for a ford most likely doesn't drive ford they probably drive something more fancy. So uh, when we're saying, okay, I use what I produce, uh, or in this case, what I offer, that's very true. In many other businesses, if you go to pharmacist and you say, do you really take all these medications? The answer probably will be as li little as possible. 
I go to car dealer again, I see the people offering one cars, but drive a different cars. You go to a clothing store and people there selling one thing, but wearing different thing. So uh, there is a little disconnect. In our situation, we love the product. That's why we're sharing it. The second thing important, we use the product. Meaning, we're not only saying to other people, oh, I tried it, it's good, now you try it, and you use it, I don't, because I don't need it. No, we love the product so much, and we believe that it's so good, that we keep using it over and over again. Now, I refer people to the company. So once again, there are different ways that the marketing companies work. Most of the time, uh, the distributor's role is to connect the, uh, the consumer with the company and step away. Meaning there are two people who are looking for each other anyways, so we're helping them to connect with each other and benefit from one another. The consumer gets the benefits or goods or services, the company gets profits. Now, company gives us a little commission check, which is nice. So we also provide support to and there are two kind categories of people in this case we have cons customers and we have other distributors what does that mean okay guys if it's hard to see it i'll later take the picture and post it uh, under this video but customers are obviously people who come and buy the products from the company and what support i'm talking about uh depending on, on the product the person has to be educated how to use the product, how not to use the product, right? If you ever uh, read the instructions for microwave, I saw it in one place. Don't put uh, pets to dry in microwave, which is a ridiculous uh, recommendation as, <laughs> as I'm concerned. But apparently, if it was in the manual, somebody did it. So we have to teach or educate our consumers how to use our products. And that's exactly what we do. This is something we have to teach our people to you to do how to use the website, how to order products, what kind of products uh, that will be serving their specific needs. And the second thing, we involve people to grow this business. And again, those people are not let alone. Just say, okay, you sign up with the company, now you're on your own. You're the sale, uh, in independent salesperson or independent uh, entrepreneur. No, we stay with our people. We help them to build their own business. We educate them on things that we already know and people who came before us, they educate us. So it's a connection, it's a chain that everybody helps each other. And people up there are interested to help people down, uh, down line because everybody makes or works for one goal to create more sales for the company. Again, I'm right now talking about honest and uh, fair uh, recommendations. So fair uh, referrals to the company and obviously we're not talking about just selling for the sake of selling because that is dishonest and i would never sign up for something like that finally <clears throat> actually two more finally we promote we promote ourselves to uh potential consumers and distributors and they promote the company to same two categories of people mm -hmm. why do we need this promotion because if i have a great idea but nobody knows about it, my idea worth nothing. Even if it's greatest idea in the world, but nobody besides me knows about it, too bad. So we're promoting the company and ourselves, and by doing so, we're learning. So the last thing that I have to do as a distributor in this kind of company is self-grow or self-improvement or uh, self-realization, whatever the word you want to use, Everything works. Self-growth. So every day I learn something new. Every day I uh, try to educate myself on the products, on the business, on the relationship uh, with people. And this helps me to become better every day, to, to grow every day. There's no day when I'm static. There's no day when I'm going back. Every single day I have to learn something. I have to get myself in better shape. I, I'm sorry, I don't have to. This is my choice. That's not a good thing. Everything here 
I do by choice. If I don't want to do it, I don't do it today. In this business, once you open up, you have no choice. You have to be in your store. You have to be in your office. If not, you're going to lose your customers or clients. In this business, today you want to work, you work. Tomorrow you don't want to work, you don't. You blame yourself though, because if you don't work, you don't produce anything. So obviously, in that respect, it's still the same. The difference between those two is, once you say if I, uh, hours nine to five, nine to five, you're there. This one, you don't have hours. It's a good and bad thing. Many people say, oh, that's so easy, and do nothing. And say, how come it doesn't work? And the answer is obvious, because you didn't work. So this model sounds easy. It is easy. But because it is easy to do, it's also easy not to do. That's what Jim Rohn was used to, used to say. Things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. And many people fail in this specific business, in this industry, because they not doing what's easy to do. So stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll explain you the company that I met and I choose and why uh, that specific company, even though there are many others out there, but I picked the one that I am in and I'm very happy about it. And I'm very passionate about the products, about services, about company, about people around me. So stay tuned for tomorrow. If you like it, please share. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me directly, comment below. And the, uh, the image of this uh, whiteboard will be attached to the comments. Thank you. Have a good day. See you tomorrow, 5.15 p.m. Bye-bye.